Brightstorm has thousands of high-quality videos covering all major subjects. Please check out more at www.brightstorm.com. So let's talk about resistor networks that are connected in parallel. So first off, what does parallel mean? Parallel means there's a choice. It means that there's a branching off in the circuit and that the current can choose to go one direction or another direction. So in parallel, a resistor network looks like this. The current comes in and then has a choice. It's going between the same two points, but there's two different roads that it can take. All right? So basically, parallel networks consist of two separate circuits that are independent of one another. All right. So in parallel, potential difference is the same. So the potential difference between these two points is the same because they're the same two points. There were just two different branches that went through. The current is going to add. So what we would say here is that I1 plus I2 is equal to the total current I. I1 plus I2. All right. Now, as always, what we'd like to do is consider this parallel network as a single effective resistor. So, I want the potential difference to be the same. Obviously, the current going in here into my effective resistor is going to be I. And so, what we're going to do is we're going to write the current as delta V over R, the potential difference divided by the resistance, with, of course, our obligatory minus sign. So, it'll be minus potential difference over R parallel equals minus potential difference over R1 minus potential difference over R2. Now, the potential difference is the same. So that means that that's going to cancel out along with the minus sign. And that gives us a formula for adding resistors in parallel. 1 over R parallel equals 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2. So adding resistors in parallel is more complicated than adding them in series. When I add them in series, I just add. When I add them in parallel, what we say is that the reciprocals add. So 1 over the effective resistance equals 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2. Now, it's very, very, very tempting, but absolutely incorrect to try to flip this upside down and say, oh, that just means R parallel equals R1 plus R2. That is not true. Now, one thing that we can think about parallel circuits as, it's kind of like you're trying to get from point A to point B. If there's only one road, then it's going to be annoying. Anybody who wants to go from point A to point B, got to take that road. If I add in parallel, it's like constructing a new road that also goes from point A to point B. And so that's actually going to reduce the traffic. So that's an important thing to remember about parallel. And it will immediately tell us that you can't just add. When I add resistors in parallel, I reduce the overall resistance. All right? Now, the way that this parallel network is going to work, I've got five amps coming in, and I've got two resistors, the 15 ohm and the 10 ohm. The potential difference is the same. So you could kind of think of these as point A, point B, two different roads. Think of the resistors as representing traffic lights. The larger the resistance, the more traffic lights along this path. So the less cars are going to go there. So the smallest current will go through the largest resistor in a parallel combination. All right. So how are we going to determine how much current goes through the 15 and how much current goes through the 10? It's actually really easy. What we're going to do first is we're going to add these two resistors in parallel. Now remember, Adding in parallel, a little bit tricky. So we'll say 1 over R parallel equals 1 over 15 plus 1 over 10. All right. Now, it's like middle school. We got to cross multiply. So it'll be 10 plus 15 over 150. 
All right? 10 plus 15 is 25 over 150. And if we do this carefully, we can cancel. So this gives us one sixth. One over our parallel is one over six. So that means our parallel equals six. Okay? Notice that our effective resistance is smaller than either of the two resistances that we added together. Smaller than either of them. Okay? And in fact, this number will always lie between this one divided by two and this one divided by two. Five, seven and a half, six. All right? It will always work that way. All right, so now that we've got the effective resistance, how are we going to determine the current through each of these guys? Well, we're going to use the idea that the potential difference has to be the same in parallel. Always, always, always. So, what is the potential difference? Well, the potential difference got to be 5 times 6. Because this network is really just this. 6 ohms, 5 amps going through. Well, 5 times 6 is 30. So that means the potential difference got to be 30. All right? In order to make a potential difference of 30 volts across a 15 ohm resistor, 2 amps. Because 2 times 15 is 30. What about down here? I want 30 volts across it. So how many amps do I need? 3 amps. And of course, this follows our earlier decision that the current needs to add. Five amps go in, two in one branch, three in the other. All right. One other way to think about parallel circuits is houses. That's the way that houses are wired because I don't want it to be necessary for me to turn on the TV in order to get the dishwasher to work, right? So we wire those two separate circuits separately. Every single outlet in your house is a separate parallel branch of the same circuit. And so that's how we get housing to work. All right, those are parallel resistor circuits. And by two, I can't do this with you two laughing back there. Work it, work it. So if we had, no, that's not right, three coplanar points. So have you ever gotten off an airplane? <laughs> that should be less than. Yeah. Dang. Is it like 500 degrees in here or what? All right, so when you're in chemistry class, you're gonna be doing a lot of work. You're gonna be starting over. So as an example, we could consider like you've got a chain hanging from two, um, two fix. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>